Um, all right, so let's just dive in and actually take a look at the views module itself. Um, the first thing, I, I'm going to assume that everyone here is familiar with downloading and installing a module. If you're not, um, there are definitely sessions that are happening that will really help you with that. Um, or you can talk to me and I can help you kind of point, I can help point you to sessions or we can meet at the Drupal Chicks table as well and I can help you download and install modules. So I'm going to assume that you're familiar with that. Um, you know how to enable a module. There is a module that you should really enable with your views module, which is advanced help. So, um, so I do just want to kind of point to that one if we go to the modules list. Um, actually, yeah. If we go to the modules list, um, under other, I have advanced help configured. And so that's really a good one for you to take a look at. Um, and make sure that you have enabled because advanced help is really gives you a lot of details into how to use views or pretty much um, many of your modules in Drupal 6. It's a very good tool. Um, when you come to your, when you've, once you've enabled views, um, you can get to views under site building because they're treated like blocks or menus. Um, so, so you can actually find them under site building. And the first screen that you're going to come to is just a list of, your, of all of your views that you have. Um, this list then has the ability you can sort through your views. Let's say you might have hundreds of views. You're probably not initially. Um, you can also sort through, like I've, I've tagged a couple of my views with the word delete because I've set them up just for the purpose of this session. So I want to remember to delete them because they're not... Um, ones that I want. So I've created a tag in my views, which you'll see how to do. So I can actually filter views, and it's just this one that I've tagged to delete to remind myself to do so. Um, so this is just like with your content or other parts of Drupal, um, you can really sort through your material, which is very helpful. This view, um, when you have when you first install Drupal out of the box, you do have a few um, disabled views that are quite nice and helpful, some that you should look at. It's nice to look at them, take a quick look at them, because the views uh, that are default out of the box from Drupal give you really good information as to how to set up a view yourself. You can kind of take a look at them, see what they're doing, and then see what fields and arguments and so forth they set up in those default views, and then you can try replicating them. The other thing is once a view is enabled, you actually have this option to clone it. So you could take a default view, clone it so that you don't lose your default view, and then, um, and then edit that clone view. And then our, once you edit that clone view, you kind of have your own view that does whatever it is that you want to do. Um, so we're going to kind of work with this. We're going to work with um, this sort of view, creating a very simple view. I've called it added view. I'm actually going to create a brand new one. But just to kind of show you what, it, what we're going to create kind of looks like, um, it's going to have a page, a block, a feed, an attachment. Um, it's going to have some default information, which I'll go through in a minute. And, um, and it's going to ultimately look like, um, well, it'll look something like this. You know, it'll be a list. It'll be a simple list. Um, it'll have a pager at the bottom. And then it'll have a randomly rotating bit of featured content, which is cached. Um, but um, it's cached, but if I were a different user, it would give me a different piece of content up there. So, um, so basically, we're going to create something a little like that, not entirely like that. What we'll do will be a little bit different. Um, okay, so once you, so we start at the views list, and then you're going to add, the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to add a view. The first thing, obviously, that you want to do is you want to name your view, so I'm just going to call it Drupal Camp View. You should give it a description, because if you remember on the list, um, let's actually go back to that list. This is the description. This tells you what the view is for so that you can actually know. Because this default name that you give to your view, or not default name, but this name that you give to your view, 
may not be that descriptive because it can only be alphanumeric characters and underscores. So the description is really important for, to help you find your view um, and know what your view is doing, especially if you have hundreds of views or if someone else is going to help you with the website. So back to naming the view, notice it's got an underscore in there because it's only going to be alphanumeric characters and then um, only alphanumeric characters and underscores because it has to go into the database. Um, and it's the unique identifier for that particular view. Then the description is something this, okay, so that'll work. This view is created for Drupal Camp demo purposes. Um, then I'm going to give it a tag. You don't have to give it a tag. Tag is entirely optional. Tag works with the rest of Drupal. You know, Drupal is very good about taxonomy, identifying things through metadata. If any of you have ever worked in a library, you certainly um, have been you, really into taxonomy. I, I know I was when I worked in a library because you could categorize everything. Drupal's great about that. So, um, so I'm just going to give this the same tag, delete. I want to remember to delete it. Is, uh, do you need to? No, you're good. Just okay. Um, so I'm just going to give this the same tag, delete, so that later on I remember to delete this particular one that we're creating. I'm going to create a node view. There are different types of views that you can create. There's node views, um, and then there's all these others. We're going to come back to these others, but basically almost every view you will ever create will be a node view because node view has every option in it, um, so it's very comprehensive. Okay, so now we're creating a new view. There's absolutely nothing in this view. It's just sort of a, a template that has a name and we can now, um, an, a sort of a blank slate that has a name, and we can now start putting stuff into it. Um, so I'm going to just give you a quick rundown. We're, right now we're just going to work in the default settings, the default sets of information that we want this view to have. The most important bits of information are going to be these three basic settings, which we're going to come to third, actually, because in a way that's kind of the third most important fields and filters and I don't know which is more important filters or fields because they're both what work together to really create the content of your view what filters does is it specifies what content you're actually going to bring into this view what fields does is it specifies which fields from that content you're going to bring into the view um, what are view, what are fields um, some of you may not may not yet have experienced Drupal enough to really be comfortable with knowing what fields are. Fields are simply the title, the author, the date, the body, each element, each piece of information in your content is a field of its own. So that's what fields are. So what fields are you bringing in? Are you bringing in the title? Are you bringing in the author? Are you bringing in the date? Um, so let's just actually start with fields. First thing that we that we want to um, first thing that we want to kind of take a look at is that the view that we're creating is a listing of all of the content that's in this uh, thing that I'm calling CFAN 411. Um, it's CFAN is a group, and it, the 411 sort of playing off of Hollywood 411 or um, whatever it's information. So these are all vendors. So. What I know for sure is what I want are titles of these vendors, because how else do you know who the vendors are? And just for the heck of it, I'm going to say, oh, and I also know that I only want the vendors, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is go to fields and click this little plus icon next to the fields heading. Again, notice I'm on the default, so I'm setting up a view can have many displays. So first I'm setting up the rules of the view. Later on, we'll go back and set up the displays that the view can have, the page, the block, the RSS feed. Um, so the defaults, I click the little plus next to the fields, and now I have all of these options down here at the bottom. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit so that you can see more because it's a little big right now. Um, okay, so there's this long list of fields available to you, and I'm going really fast intentionally, and that's kind of overwhelming. If you're trying to create a view, well, this is indicating all of the content on your Drupal website. So if you're trying to create a view, how do you know where to find what you're looking for? 
most of the things that you're going to find that you're going to need are going to be under node. Um, the the classification that they'll be under is node. So you can drop down to node. Node is basically the content on your site. Every piece of content that you put into your site creates a node, essentially. Um, so most of what you want, like the body of your, uh, the body of the content that you might want to put into your view, that's under node. Um, comment count, that's information that goes with the node. Um, a link to the node, which is this node link. It, so if you're link, you know, we said we're listing all of our vendors. Well, Box Office Mojo, that's just the title. This is the actual node. So Box Office Mojo itself linked to the node. Um, so that's what link is. And then if we take a look, um, if we take a look down here, we have title, the title of your node. So that's the vendor name, right, in this case, because our nodes are the vendors that we put in. So we definitely want that. The other thing that maybe we want for now is the teaser. Maybe we want a little, you know, like your front page view. Yeah. So when you create a view, are you also creating a new node? No, you're not. You're creating a query that you can then make use of uh, for a page. So, so you can actually kind of have a page that displays the results from the query. So um, a node is content, whereas a view is a query into your database. So, um, so sort of a um, reaching out to the database, calling out to the database, and pulling back information to display it in a, essentially in a view, in a display. Does that answer your question? Great. Okay, um, so, so you can say, okay, I want, I want titles of my nodes, I want the teaser, and maybe I also want, um, yeah, let's, actually, you know what, I don't want anything else except something from user, so I'm going to drop down, I maybe want the author name, so I'm going to go down to user and look for user name. Now, obviously, there's a lot of options in here, and we're not going to go down and talk about each one. So it's going to kind of be up to you to experiment and see where you find what you're looking for. Um, Drupal's fairly logical. So if you're looking for the author's name, that's either going to be under node, because it'll be node information, right, the, who authored that particular node, um, or it's going to be under user because you're looking for an actual user on the site. So I, anytime you're looking for individuals, I'd start with user. Um, and then, so username. So I'm just going to add those three fields for now to my view. Um, now it's going to give me specifics. It's going to say, um, I want to know how you want to deal with each of these fields that you've put in. Here's some specific options. I'm just going to stick with the defaults for a moment. We'll go back. I'm just clicking update. And I'm going to stick with the defaults. So here now, under fields, I have three things listed. I have teaser, title, and name. And I can go down to this live preview, which is really nifty. Um, and I can see how that's displaying. And wow, that's a mess. So first it says teaser. Then it has the teaser. Then it says title, and then the title. And then it says name, admin. And then butt it up right underneath it. It says teaser again. So it's, it's a complete mess, right? And not only is it a complete mess, but it's showing me things that I don't want to see. I only want to see content from the CFAN 411 section of the site. So I only want to see those pieces of content that have been entered through CFAN 411 content type. So in order to do that, the next thing I'm going to do is go to filters. And I'm going to add a filter, so I just click that little plus button next to filters, and I'm going to go down and say, okay, I want node, because I want a specific type of content, so that, that's going to be node type add. Now, by the way, types of content, like um, story and page, by now, if you did introduction to Drupal, um, if you did that class, then you learned about the difference between a story and a page. Those are types of content. So all these other things are just types of content that I've created for this particular site, not types of content that are default out of the box with Drupal, but they're exactly the same concept. And this is stuff that you'll learn more about in CCK Demystified. Um, so basically, I only want the content from CFAN 411. So I'm going to up, I'm saying it's one of, 
CFAN 411, and then I'll update that. Now, everything that I have here looks like, you know, it says, oh, Riot method post-production, that looks like a vendor. Cast, that's a vendor. Blue Room, that's a vendor. Okay, now this starts to make sense uh, because this is the type of content that I want. But this display is still a complete and utter disaster. You wouldn't publish this for anyone to see. Um, so the way that you're going to deal with that is, first of all, these fields need a different order, right? The title should always be at top. And also these labels are really kind of not good. And maybe you want a header tag around the vendor name. The other thing that might be nice is this is supposed to be to talk about the vendors, not the users who posted the vendor information. Well, right now, the vendor name is not a link. And the user is a link to the user page. So that's working against the view that I want to create. Um, please do ask questions at any point, by the way, if I'm going too fast or if you're feeling confused. Yes? How did the username become a link? Good question. The username became a link because all I did when I added these fields was I let it keep the defaults. By default, out of the box, um, views says usernames should probably link to user profiles. Um, and by default, pretty much everything else, it doesn't really automatically link. So this is just the result of the default settings of views. I didn't set any of my own details at this point yet. Um, so that's how it became a link, just because by default, views said usernames should link to user profiles, which is good logic. But in this case, we don't want that. So what I'm going to do, um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put these into a better order. So there's this other little icon next to the plus sign, this up and down arrow. You can click on that. And now down here, you get your list in the order that they're appearing. And you get this nifty little delete button as well. So that's useful if you're trying to get rid of a field really quickly. Um, but you can actually then pull on these little handles and change the order. So I've just moved the title up. Now, here's a great time to talk about something. Views is working on Ajax, and it's not saving at all until you press save. So notice that it's nice to me, and it's turning that yellow, and it's putting a little star next to it, which says, if you navigate away from this right now, this change that you just made will be lost. It will not save. So always remember to update when you actually want something to take effect. Now my field order has changed. The preview also shows that. Now the title's at top, the teaser's in the middle, the name's at the bottom. Um, but there's something else. The view itself is not saved. There's still yellow up at the top, and there's this orange that says new view. Um, if the view were not brand new, if the view had already been saved, but there were changes to it, it would say changed view. That means that whatever you're doing will be lost if you don't save it, if you go away and you don't save it. So, um, so I think what we should probably do then is just save this so that if I accidentally navigate away, I do get click happy sometimes, um, then it won't actually disappear. So now it tells me the view's been saved, that orange has gone away, and now I can safely know that if I navigate away from here, um, I'll, whatever I've already done will still be there. The other thing that I want to point out is down here, this live preview that we've been using, up until this point, it's automatically appeared for us. But now that I saved the view, it went away. Um, so to get that back, you'll just choose the display that you want to preview. Right now, we only have one. We only have our defaults. But later, we're going to have other displays, which we'll get into. Um, so you choose that, and then you click on Preview. And now it appears for you again. So you can just kind of preview what you're doing right here. Um, OK, so now I'm going to go back to my fields, because I want to get rid of these labels. I want to link this title to its node. And I want to unlink this username. And I also want to put a header tag around this title, uh, because header tags, we have, um, we have some really good SEO people here who will probably, hopefully, tell you what I'm about to tell you, that header tags are really good for SEO. Um, so. So it tells the search engines that this is more important information. 
And so the search engines will take that in. Um, so you definitely want to make use of header tags around that information that's very important on your site. So the first place I'll go is to user, because that's going to be the simplest. And up here it says label name. So if we go down here, notice it says name in front of the, the name. So all you have to do to get rid of that is just delete it and display nothing in there. Also, by default, this is set to link this field to its user. Back to your question. Um, so if I uncheck that, then update it, now that name has gone away and it's unlinked. There's, there's nothing there. Um, then the other thing I want to go, I want to do, is get rid of the label before the teaser. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to just say teaser, no label. There's other options that we can do, which we'll get into. But for now, we're just going to remove the label. And now that's a little nicer. Now we just have the title to deal with. So I'm going to click on that. Again, just remove the label, nice and simple. Link the field to its node, this last option right here. So that says link the title to its node. But now there's something else I want to do, right? I want to make it a header. So I'm going to rewrite the output of this field. And all I'm going to do is just put in H2 for the header tag. I'm going to look down here at the replacement patterns. Drupal's great about giving you replacement patterns throughout your site. You need the token module to make that happen. Um, so at, during one of the sessions later, or come talk to me, find out about the token module. But you definitely need that one to make this happen. So you basically need a token. So this will then put the exact same information that I'm rewriting back into the field. And now I'm going to update that. Now, these are linked. They're header two level tags, and they're links. And so it started, it still doesn't look great. And we're not really going to sit here and make it look great. But it certainly looks a lot more presentable than it did at first. And it was fairly simple stuff that I did to make that happen. Um, is what happened there clear? Does anyone want me to go back to anything that we just went over? Yeah. So originally this list was not there and now it becomes here. Mm -hmm. So where can we see it? Nowhere yet. <laughs> That's a good question. That's a really good question. So right now we're just setting up the defaults for what this view is going to do. The view doesn't have any displays yet. Um, so if you look over here where it says add display, we just have defaults and we have no actual displays under it. So you can't actually go anywhere yet to see it. Um, and we will, we will be doing that um, very soon. Um, I'm going to save this, as mentioned, every time you make changes, um, you know, significant changes, done a significant amount of work, make sure that you save it. Otherwise, it will go away. Um, yeah. Yes, you can. Um, so under fields, and actually, why don't we, you know, I, I'm going to be adding that to this. Um, I'm going to be adding it a little bit later, but um, actually, we'll just add it now because you've asked. So under, in fact, you can add taxonomy to, and there you are, to anything. Um, you can add taxonomy to filters. So you can say filter by only those items that fall within this taxonomy. Um, you can sort by taxonomy. You can pretty much do whatever you want. We will be adding taxonomy to this particular view. If we go back here to this, these are, these are taxonomy. This is a vocabulary right here that's calling terms out of the vocabulary. Um, and that's been added to the view. So I'll just add the taxonomy right now. Taxonomy, term, add. What was that? Um, now I need to, so I don't want a label. I won't link it for now, just for the fun of it, just to have it. So now it's the taxonomy has been, the vocabulary term has been added as a field and, um, and can be treated uniquely. You know, the same way that I put a header tag around this, um, around, you know, Riot Method post-production up here, around the titles, 
I can also rewrite any of these other fields. So if I go into taxonomy right now, you know, here's post-production taxonomy. If I go in there, um, that's interesting. Um, I can, you know, I can say, um, I don't know if the small filter works on this, but or if small is in my filters, my HTML filter, but it might be. Um, so EM, for those of you who aren't familiar, EM just means emphasize, which means italic. Um, and then small just means make it smaller, basically. Um, so if that works, I don't know if those are in my filters. Yes, they are. So now the text is smaller. It's italicized. Um, so anything that you can do, you can really do anything you want. Um, actually, I was going to say something all heroic at the beginning of this talk that I forgot to say, which I'll go back to now. Maybe I did say it. No, I didn't. Um, so working with views and some CSS magic um, is basically similar to what uh, Chris Charlton says about working with PHP and web development, which is that the limits are your imagination and your time. And obviously with views, that's not entirely uh, true because you do need a little bit more than views. But really, the limits could very well be your imagination and your time. Um, OK, back on track after that. Um, OK, so I just saved it again. Um, so what I would like to do now is go on to these basic settings, unless there's another question before we start adding some displays. OK, great. OK, so basic settings. Um, this whole area right here is really the next most important thing. Um, and this is all information about the displays in general. Title is what appears up in the top, at the, at the very top of your web browser. Um, so it's basically the page title when the view is displayed, or the block title. If you're doing a block, then this is the title. If you're doing a page, then this is the title. So it's whatever the title is for what you're doing. So this is going to be your Drupal Camp view um, by default. And then I'm going to skip over some of these, because some of these are much more interesting and take more time, um, and jump all the way down to access. Access is a pretty cool one, because what access says is you can actually control who has access to this view? You can say, you know, this, the person using this view must be a registered, authenticated user on this site. Or the, and that would be a you know, role. You can put a, a role. You can say, you know, the person using this has to be a CFAN member. Um, you can also say, oh, I just, uh, I just added that. You can also do it by permission. Maybe you have a very particular content type. Uh, for example, for the uh, Drupal Camp website, I created a content type that's an anonymous question for the Drupal Chicks panel that we're going to have tomorrow. So that you can go in and ask a question without worrying about self-censorship or sounding, um, sounding inflammatory or whatever. And nobody will see your name. Well, I created a special content type for that. And then I um, created a view for that. So, well, the view says anybody can see it. But I could have said only people who have the permission to create those, that type of content is allowed to see the content. And I would just do that here with permission and then choose from the permissions list. Um, so that's, that's very useful as well. Um, then additionally, um, the other ones to show you are header and footer. Header and empty text. Header and footer throw things to, at the top and the bottom of your view that are hard-coded. Um, empty text is what gets displayed if there's nothing in the field at all. Um, since this website is our, um, our sample website, let's just go, oh wait, you know what, that's not going to work because we're not signed in. Um, oh, we were signed in. <laughs> um, anyway, if we go to job listings, this, it'll work on here, too, because I downloaded the database. If you go to job listings, there are no jobs listed. It's the economy, right? It's the film industry. There's nothing going on. Um, so, so if you go to job listings, there's nothing there, so you get empty text. But you also get the default header and the default footer. This, this is the footer. This is the header. I hard-coded them in. And then this is the text that shows when there's nothing there. 
for the view to show. Um, so you can, you can do all of that right here. If you click on any one of them, you just get this box into which you can enter HTML. You can be really as fancy with your HTML as you want to be. And then you can update it, and now that text will be there. So, uh, whatever. Um, now you see the header. It'll be on your view. It's right there. Um, so, I'm just going to delete that so that it's not distracting us. Um, so those are some basic settings that are very useful to you. But also very useful to you, um, even more useful to you, are these, um, these settings in here, the style and, and formatting and all of that. Um, so let's just take a quick look at this list that we have. This is an unformatted view. But what you can do is you can go to style you can change unformatted to, um, let's start with table. And now you have columns for your table. You can actually tell things to be in the same column, which I'll show you in a minute. First, I'm just going to leave the defaults. And if I update that, automatically the view looks different. And by the way, in Firefox, um, which isn't going to see this view because I intentionally left it unsigned in, so we won't go there. But in, in Firefox, if you're using Firebug, you can actually then, you know, take a look with Firebug and see what class has been dynamically generated for each of these fields in your table, and then you can style them specifically in your style sheets. Blake is going to talk a lot about that, I think, or something like that um, in his theming with views session. So, um, so it doesn't have to look like this. It can look really nice. Um, and you know, be really fancy. Um, so that's uh, so that's one way that you can view things. Um, I want to go back to table, and I just want to show you something else. There's this little right. If I clicked right now on the word table, and it gave me the styling options, I want to click on this little um, settings sort of cogwheel um, button instead. And now what I can do is I can tell things to actually appear in the same column as something else. So name and taxonomy term, for example. Maybe I want, instead of name and taxonomy term, I want name and taxonomy term to be in the same cell. So I'm just going to add taxonomy term to name. And maybe I'll put a separator in here. I'll just put a BR tag. For those of you who don't know, BR stands for break. It just breaks it. Um, so it's a line break. So I'll put that in, and then I'll update that. And now, those two appear in the same cell. Again, very simple, not, not a lot. You're really not doing much coding. It's all through the interface, all through the UI um, administrative, which is pretty cool. Um, so other options, so there was table. Um, there's also HTML list, which I didn't update. I'm going to do it as maybe an ordered list, just for fun. And now it just lists in an HTML list. Again, very, very simple, not much work. Um, just to show you the other one, if you're doing slideshows, and I actually put some pictures on here so I could show you, or not slideshows, but picture galleries, um, that, that would look a lot better than this is going to look in a grid. But just to quickly show you what a grid looks like, there's a grid. Again, if these were pictures, it'd look a lot better. Um, and maybe I'll, I'll do that if we have time. I'll show you a grid with pictures so that it looks better. But basically, the grid just puts them all together. A very good example of a grid view would be the Drupal Camp attendee views, um, which you've all seen, I'm, I'm sure. Um, OK, so the, no, um, that, that's just a simple view. The views rotator, hopefully, we'll be able to get to talk about, um, because I think it's a cool little module. And since you asked about it, I'll just show it to you really quickly. Um, and hopefully, we'll get to spend time on it. But if not, it's actually pretty simple. Um, OK, so this is the views rotator right here. If we just wait, it just rotates through the pictures on its own. Um, so I think it's really cool. And you can do, it doesn't have to be pictures, it can be text, it can be really kind of anything. 
Um, again, imagination and, and time. Um, but yeah, so, so there were a couple options in here um, that is views, rotator, um, and calendar that are appearing because of other things that I'm already doing on the site, which is why I'm ignoring them. The out-of-the-box views will give you only these four, the grid, HTML list, table, and unformatted. So those are just the ones that we're looking at right now. Um, okay, so the grid looks kind of, kind of bad for this particular moment. So let's just go back to unformatted so that it doesn't look really scary. Um, now there's another thing that I really wanted to show you that's a uh, grouping field. Um, when we were in there, on, in pretty much any category, we saw this thing called grouping field. Um, so before we go into that, um, actually as we go into that, if we go back here to, oops, too many clicks. Okay. If we go back here, um, you'll notice that this list is grouped by its taxonomy term. So let's actually do that. Let's group the list by its taxonomy term. And so the first thing I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go back into the taxonomy term in my fields. And I'm going to keep it in my fields, but I'm going to remove it from the display entirely so that it's not showing up down here underneath the person's name. So in order to do that, I'll come back in here to edit it, and I'm just going to click on this option right here, exclude from the display, and then update. Now, that has been excluded from the display, but the query is still being made, and the information is still available for me to make use of in my view. So in order to use it, I'm going to go to style, and actually not to that part of style, but to this little settings cogwheel right here, and choose grouping field, and I'm going to group by taxonomy term. That would not be available to me if it were not a field. So just something to remember. Um, so because it's a field, I can actually make use of it to group my content. So if I update this, now post-production, and it's all post-production stuff, Casting, and it's all casting stuff. Film funds, and it's all film fund stuff. And by the way, notice that it's small and italicized. That's because it still remembers what I put in there earlier. So let me change that so that it like, really calls it out. Um, let's just make it um, H1 so that it's insanely big. And thank you. Um, okay, so now it's insanely big, so you can see the, um, the separation. So in a very, and, and actually another way to see this even more clearly would be probably if we do an HTML list, um, oops, let's do it unordered, and let's just keep that grouping field. Now you can see it a little more clearly because there's actually the indentation. So your content is being grouped in a very similar way to this. I mean, this, this is obviously a view that's calling more detail. We're, we're doing this in a very quick way. Um, but it's calling these in a very specific way, which is very useful to us. Um, OK. Before I go on to, oh, actually, I, I almost missed something first. Um, so the other thing to look at is this use pager items to display, and more link. These three options are also very useful to you. Right now, we're only seeing 10 things in this list. But you've seen over here, there's a whole lot more than 10 things. So that's being controlled by this option right here, items to display. So I'm just going to change that. I'll change it to 20 things instead of 10. And update. And now the list has gotten significantly longer. Um, but as you can see also there's still more than 20 things so I'll do a pager. On the Drupal Camp website you saw pagers at the bottom of the attendee listings or the session listings because you went on to the next pages. So I'm going to add a pager. I'm going to add a full pager so that I see how many pages there are at the bottom. And now I get this to actually be able to navigate 
to the distant pages um, of this view. And I see that there's four pages worth of content. Um, so the other thing that I can do is a more link. Um, a more link, if we had a display that were a page, the more link would link to that page. We're going to see that a little later. So we'll come back to the more link. Don't let it confuse you yet if, if it, I am confusing you by bringing it up now. Um, I do want to point out before we continue on, I have changed view up at the top, and I have yellow fields, which means I really should save before going too much further. Okay, so before, I'm about to continue on to sorting, even before we get to displays, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do sorting, um, and then a little bit more with filtering. Before I do that, I want to know if there are any questions. Yeah. Drupal 6, Drupal 6.13, and it's views 2. Yeah, that's a very good question. Views 1 is, um, is m much more difficult, really, um, which is the, well, more difficult. It's just things are more separated. It doesn't have this really fancy user interface. All of the concepts that are being presented here are, can be um, backwards compatible with views 1. It's just you're going to have to look a little harder to find the tools because there's not this really cool user interface. Uh, question up here. Are there, are there any other uh, special modules that you install to get, to, say, you use Ajax and get any of those other options? Is that all standard? Everything I've shown you so far is standard views. Um, you've been seeing a couple little hints of things that I've ignored um, and haven't been mentioning that are other, other modules. Um, Actually, that's not entirely true in that what you're seeing right now is heavily dependent on the taxonomy module, which is core, and also heavily dependent on the CCK module. Um, but, but this is views. If you have CCK, you'll have access to, to most everything you're seeing um, along with views. Yeah. There are some other cool modules that I think are really helpful, um, which I'll give you a link at the end of this so that you can get to those additional modules as well. Yeah. Any other questions before I move on? Okay. Yeah. So, so once you create the views that same view on the across multiple pages. Yeah. Yeah. When we start talking about displays and, and blocks and everything, we'll go into yeah, you can you can use that view very extensively. Um, so okay. So on to sorting. Um, okay, so the other thing that we've seen, oh, my live preview went away, so I'm just going to refresh that. The other thing that we've seen is that right now the sorting seems a little strange. And I'll actually tell you what it's doing by default is it's pulling up the, mo the content by order the content was created. So I built this, so the piece of content I stuck in there to make sure that I could test this is the first piece of content. So it's the first one listed. Um, Jen McGowan is the person who's in charge of this group, so she then went in and put a whole bunch of content in herself. And so those pieces of content were the next pieces of content entered. Well, that's not exactly a useful way to organize your, it might be a useful way to organize your data, but usually in your displays, it's not necessarily useful. What we've done here is we've ordered them alphabetically, first alphabetically by taxonomy, and then alphabetically by actual word. So that's all done in sorting. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add, this is sort criteria right here. I'm just going to add the title, um, and that's node, by the way, because it's part of your content information. Oh, not type, title. So I'm going to add node title to my sorting, and I want it ascending because I want it to start with A, go to Z. Oops, not descending. And then I want to update that. So now, the first thing is the, I, the A's. And this is based on the content, not the taxonomy terms. So first we have all the A's. And then it goes, it continues on alphabetically. But the taxonomy is kind of random. So it's not really doing what we want. So we also need to sort alphabetically by taxonomy. Does that make sense? Have I thrown anyone off? OK, great. OK, so, um, so we're going to sort by taxonomy. I'm going to filter down to taxonomy to make it easy to find, taxonomy term. And we're going to do ascending, same thing, update that. 
and okay that's good actually okay and it's not actually doing what we expect um, and the reason for that is because things happen in views in the order that they're listed so right now node title is listed before taxonomy term so the sorting is prioritizing the title of the node over the term itself. So all I need to do is click on these little arrows right here to open up the options and then reorder, put taxonomy term first, update that, and now it's going to be alphabetical in both orders. So the taxonomy is alphabetical first and then within each taxonomy term the items listed are listed alphabetically. You can sort by user, you can sort by date created. Date created is a, a very common way to sort. Maybe you want your most recent content first. That's how the front page, uh, the sort of default front page of Drupal works. Um, so you can really kind of sort by pretty much anything um, that's kept in Drupal. So the other thing that I just want to take a quick look at before we go on to setting up our actual displays is one other kind of really cool feature that I really like um, with views, which is actual exposing your filters so that the user can sort by those filters themselves. Um, so for example, the keywords and the vendor name. So if we go back here to our sort, or sorry, not to our sort, to our filters, I'm going to add new filters in here. And what I want to add is search because I'm allowing the user to search by words. That may not be um, exactly logical to, to you as you're kind of exploring Drupal the first time. Um, so I think the first time I tried to figure this out, I think um, what I ended up doing was going to drupal.org and sort of asking how do I set this up um, in, on the forums. Um, and, it, and it was actually pretty easy to find the solution that I wanted. So um, if, you're not, if your own personal logic isn't matching whatever the setup is for um, the interface, just ask on, on drupal.org and you'll probably find the solution. If you just go in and search on drupal.org, whatever your question is, something will come up um, because other people have had a similar question and, and answered it. Okay, so I've just added search terms. And now what I need to do is expose that filter. So up until now, everything that you're seeing down here is happening on the back end and then being displayed to the user. It's not exposed for the user to actually see. So I'm exposing it. And I'll leave all these by default because it'll work, except for maybe the label, which says search terms. Um, maybe I'll just change that to search vendor. And on empty output, show all. That seems like a nice thing to do because then they still have something. Now, up here at the top, there's search vendor. So I can just type in any vendor name and click apply. And it'll actually show me that vendor, which I'm not going to do because I haven't saved the view. So if I did that, I would create a problem for myself. But um, so instead of testing it there, I'll save it. Now it's saved. And then we can test it elsewhere in just a moment. We can get back to the question that's been asked, how do you actually see this somewhere? Um, so we're about to go on to displays so that we can actually test that. And um, displays, you'll see up here, there's, there are four default display options. Ignore date browser for now. That's one of those things that I've added. Um, so attachment, block, feed, and page. Those are your default displays. Um, so we're just going to start with page. Page is you know, like a node. If you've added a node and you go to the URL for that node, it's kind of showing up in a page. Um, so you can go to a specific URL and there you have it. Um, so we're going to create a page that is a display of everything that we've just created. Now there's two things here. There's defaults and there's page. So your settings for your page can actually be different from your settings for your defaults. Um, so we, it carries over everything from the defaults. And there's this new option here, which is page settings. 
There's path and there's menu. First thing we're going to do, actually even if we didn't do that, um, before I add something, I just want to scroll down here and show you that I get an error message. It says display page uses path, but the path is undefined. And so now my live preview is unable to preview due to validation errors. This is because the page is missing, um, so it doesn't know what to do. It, the page URL is missing. So I'm just going to put, I click on this, on none, and I'm going to put, um, let's just put Drupal Camp view in there. And that's now going to be the URL by which I can come to this particular, um, I'm going to save that to this particular view. So now... If we come over here, we type in Drupal Camp oops, view. It'll give us that view that we've been creating. So now you can actually see it somewhere. Um, and you can search vendors. So if I want to know about method, um, I can click on that and get method to come up for me as a user. Um, or I could actually, you know, I shouldn't have used Bender because this will also work. It'll also just show me all the post stuff as well. So, um, so this is, again, fairly, fairly useful. So that's just a simple page. We just created a simple page. Now, for my page, maybe, um, maybe I actually want things to be a little bit different. Um, maybe my page right now has all of these teasers on it. Um, just gonna okay, get back to everything. It has all these teasers on it, and these things are headers. So maybe instead I actually just want it to be a list of each of the vendors, and I don't want that header tag around it. But I still want my default view to maintain the information, the author information, um, and the full teaser. So I'll go back to my view here, and now I'm automatically back on defaults. This is the one, I don't know if you can tell, yeah, you can. Um, so it's lighter, this is bold and it's lighter, and that's telling me that's the one I'm editing right now. So I'll click on page to edit that one. Make sure you're editing the display that you want to edit, because otherwise you'll make changes to your other displays. Um, the other thing that's really important to note is that there are some things that are italicized, and then there are some things that are not italicized. Those things that are italicized um, are your defaults. And if you edit them as they are right now, still italicized, they will change your default settings. So for example, I'm on page, and Drupal Camp View is the name of the page, and, or is the title, sorry, not the name of the page, it's the title of the page, which, by the way, is what we see up here as well. Um, so if I go in and edit this and change it to Drupal Camp um, page, I literally change my default display. And if I refresh this, uh, well, this is the view that we were changing, but okay, it didn't. It must be cached. Oh, no, I didn't save it. That's why. Hmm? Is there a question? Okay. Um, okay, so I'll save it, and then um, now if I refresh it, it'll change that to page up at the top. So, um, so that's so basically, if you affect your italicized stuff and it's italic, it'll change your defaults. So you just want to be careful of that. Um, sorry about that. I'm not used to wearing these things. Um, so if you click on um, if you click on any of these italicized things, you'll get this little button over here that says override. And if you override and then update, now it's no longer italicized. So now any change that you make only affects the view that you're working, or sorry, the display that you're working on at that particular time. It doesn't affect your view, your default views. Does that make sense? kind of a frustrating, um, it's, it's a frustrating thing if you, when you make the mistake, um, which you do no matter how much you work with Drupal, um, because you're working quickly and, and you might make the changes. So, um, so now you can make your changes without affecting anything. So I want to go to fields. I want to override the defaults. By the way, um, settings, you can override specific settings. 
In these other categories, your overrides affect everything in the category. Just something to keep in mind. Um, yeah. To, yeah, you can. Uh, well, not really. Um, yeah, actually, you can. Sorry. I, um, if you you can um, you can actually click on this and say use default, and then it'll go back to the defaults. But if you change the defaults and update it accidentally, you can't go back to those defaults. Right. So once once you accidentally change it, it it's changed. Um, so you can override, and then what we're going to do here, so now that this is overridden, I'm just going to remove everything except taxonomy term and update that. And notice what I'm looking at here is still that big long list in my preview. So if you want to see a preview of a particular display, you need to change the drop-down menu display to the one that you want, and now you get the view that, or the display that you're looking at in your preview. So just change that and then recheck preview. Um, but this also looks kind of weird now that they're just titles. So I'm going to just go in here really quickly since I'm not affecting my defaults and I'm going to undo the rewrite output and just update that. So now that looks a little better. Still a little strange, but it looks a little better. Um, and then save that. And then once that's done saving, now we have something that's a little bit more like a comprehensive list of information. Um, so that, that's really a page view, and, um, and that's really kind of how you create a page view. The next most important kind of view, probably, or sorry, display, I need to use the correct term there. The next most important kind of display, probably, it would be the block. Um, does everyone here feel like they understand what blocks are? Raise your hand. Well, just complain if you don't so that I know to explain it. Okay, I think, I think a couple of people seem to indicate that they might not understand exactly what blocks are. So um, this is basically a page view that you're looking at right now overall. Blocks are kind of like, I, I like to think of blocks as like Lego blocks. You can sort of add your Legos. Um, onto your big Lego thing. So blocks are kind of like the little Lego blocks that you'll add on. This is a block right right here. This is a block and this is a block. So these are just kind of added views that you're kind of putting onto your page view as a whole. Kind of adding them on. Blocks usually, they, blocks can really go anywhere. Usually they end up in the right or left sidebar or in the footer in the header. That's usually where they end up, but they can really go anywhere. Um, so in your view, you can actually create a block <coughs> of your own. So I'm just going to do that right now. Under, <coughs> excuse me, under displays, block and add the display. Now blocks are a little bit different, obviously. They're not full pages, so you might not want them to be quite as long. So the first thing I'm going to do is change this 20. Um, make sure that I override it so that I'm not changing my default, especially now that I have a page that's relying on that default. I'll change that to 3 and then update it. So if I go to my live displays now and I preview, it's only going to show me 3. Well, it's also showing me this pager, it's showing me the taxonomy, it's showing me all kinds of stuff that isn't, again, useful in a block. So what I'm going to do now is override my fields, not that way. Um, I'm going to override my fields, <laughs> and then um, And then I'm just going to remove all of the content that I don't really want. I don't really want anything other than the title. I also don't want it to show up as a header, um, but I do want it to be linked. OK, so now I have those three things, and I have this pager. That pager might be too much, so I'm going to remove the pager as well. No pager. and. Maybe I don't want the list view. Maybe I just want to make it unformatted. So I'll do that too. Um, make sure that I override it. Same thing. And update. 
Um, no grouping field update. And now it's just showing me the three items. Now it's showing me the three items by alphabetical listing. Um, so everybody's always going to see the same three items, which might not exactly be fair, right? Maybe this is your sponsors for your Drupal camp, and you're showing three sponsors, and it's the same three sponsors every time. That's a problem. So, um, so what we're actually going to do is go to our sort criteria, and we're going to remove those defaults on the sort criteria uh, by overriding them. And I'm actually going to take away both of the alphabetical sortings because I don't want either of them. Now it's showing me the first three pieces of content that were entered. Still doesn't solve my problem. So um, when I first showed you some views and I said, you know, these things are randomized. They, uh, there's one item that shows up and it shows up randomly. It changes on refresh. It changes on every single page. That's done through this really great piece of sort criteria, which is under, I'm just going to point you to it so that you don't have to hunt for it on your own the way that I did. Um, it's under global, the global category. So when you're adding sort criteria, choose global. And then click on global random, which is the only option in there, and add. And update, yes. We do want to use overridden values. So now it's three things, uh, which I'm not actually going to show you the refreshes because I haven't saved this view. So we're going to um, finish creating the block, and then I'll show you that on refresh, every refresh, it, um, it'll actually change to different three different things. That's how the Drupal Camp website works. The featured people, are, I'm guessing that's how they did it because I didn't see them how they built it, but I'm guessing that it's a view that's randomly refreshed. Yeah? Is it possible to add like, a time frame to the randomization? So like, it'll display three things for a day, and then the next day there's a few more? Um, OK, that's interesting. And probably, I haven't, I haven't tried something like that, but I'm pretty sure that you could probably figure out through setting up arguments and stuff like that. Um, again, it's kind of your, the limits of your imagination. Um, I would look in arguments, unless does anyone in, probably at this point, anyone who's advanced enough to be able to answer that question better may have left, but maybe not. I'm not advanced, but I'm noticing there's a caching. You can do it in this premiere, caching, so. That might work. Um, the caching on here is usually used specifically to say, do you want this block to be cached or not cached? Um, and just whether or not it follows the specific rules of your default site caching. Um, because blocks, sometimes you might use blocks for like very frequent updates, like a Twitter, uh, um, you know, on the Drupal website, there's the Twitter feed, um, and on the uh, front page it shows, it has a block that updates the Twitter feed. So if it followed certain caching rules, then it might stay for much longer than you wanted, but you want it to actually update every time cron runs and find something new. Um, so, but you might be able, that's a very good place to look. If, if you're trying it out, you might be able to look in there, yeah. On that example site you showed with the, uh, all the photographs, mm -hmm. that no, that's using Views Rotator, um, which is, it's another module. It's a module that I love. Um, and, but you, you can set how long between the rotations on that. So you might be able to use that for that, but uh, I think you're going to have better site performance if you figure out how to do it through the actual view module itself. Um, just because views rotator will take some, some time, some performance hits on your site. Uh, yeah. OK. Um, so before we save this and actually play with our new block, um, we need a name for it so that we can find it in our blocks list. So I'm going to name it, um, you know, Drupal Camp View Block, just so it makes sense. And let's just look in here and see, yeah, it's, it's sort of pulling on the default caching options um, in caching. But, okay, so, so I just gave my block a, a name. Oh, and you know what the other thing is? My block has these sort filters on it. So I think I should probably remove those. 
Um, I definitely want to keep the CFAN 411 because I only want that type of content. Um, but I am going to remove the um, I am going to remove the other one. Okay, so now I'm going to save this so that my block is saved. And then we're, we'll go over to um, to the blocks list. And we'll find our block. For some of you may not really have become familiar with blocks yet. Um, that's okay. I'm, I'm actually doing a session tomorrow morning at 9 that's Site Administration Basics. So if some things like, it's, it's a very basic um, session specifically for those of you who need to learn how to kind of manage a site that you have that maybe someone else has built or, um, or sort of understand things like blocks and nodes and such. Um, so that would be a good session for you if this is looking very foreign to you. Um, but for now, I'm just going to kind of gloss, gloss over it and look for um, my Drupal views block. Does anybody see it? I don't see it. Hmm. Oh, you know what? No. Let's just make sure that I actually saved that. Drupal camp, it's saved. Oh, 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 yeah. Um, no, actually, that's a different one that I meant to get rid of. But actually, maybe, maybe you're right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It's there. Um, usually, it doesn't show up by default. That's in, it's probably calling because of what I did last night. It's probably remembering some of what I did last night. Um, so it shouldn't be there yet. But it'll by usually it'll be disabled by default, so it'll be down below. Um, it's automatically gone into the right sidebar, which is where I wanted it to be. Um, I can configure it um, as I can configure any block, which we can um, we can talk about at the Drupal Chicks table, or we can talk about tomorrow at Site Administration Basics. Um, but basically, the block is now up there. Thank you for seeing it there. Um, so the block is now up there, and it's showing four. So that actually probably is a different block than the one that I just made, but that's okay because it's here. And if we refresh, it'll it just changes. Okay, now it's. Yeah, you might be right. Yeah, I think you're right. So anyway, I can I can fix that with um, with my CSS or whatever, um, just to change the the look of the view a little bit, make it look a little better. But so that's a block. It's randomly changing. You can use that to show, you know, a picture um, that changes on every refresh. You can use that to show pretty much anything you can think of, anything that you might want to randomly rotate. You can use this to to do that with. Um, so, for example, I'm just I shouldn't do this. I should make a new view for what I'm about to do. But instead. I'm just going to do it in here, override. I'm removing that content type by which I'm filtering to add a new content type. Uh, new, sorry. Update. And um, images for Drupal Camp. There it is. OK, it's one of these images for Drupal Camp. And I'm going to change my fields. And I'm just going to add one field, which is the, oh, by the way, did you see that? Um, let's go back over here. Cancel. OK. So I just took away all the fields in this block. And now I get this error message saying this block uses fields and there are none defined. So now I have the same unable to do anything about it. Um, so if you have things like that, like fields, um, an empty fields area, then you might get that error message. Um, OK, so I'm adding a piece of content from a custom content type right now into my fields. And that piece of content is, um, if I can remember what I called it, a uh, field Drupal image. 
So I'm just looking for content image, field Drupal image. So content type that I created last night with some photos in it. I'm just going to add that. I don't want any label on it. It's an image. So I'm just going to look at my options here. I want to choose image and update. And this is a block now. It's the second block here. So if I preview it, it's showing just images. Um, now, that may not be the way that I actually want to display these images. I might just want one image that randomly rotates. So I would reset the sort criteria to work like this other block and not have it show as a list and so on. So hopefully that makes sense without me actually going and, and doing it. Um, so the other thing to, to check out here is now I have two displays that are called block, which isn't very useful for me when I'm trying to kind of edit this and, um, and really work with my view. So you can actually name your displays. There's basic settings right here. There's names. So you can click on name, choose block, and then change it. And which one am I editing? The first one. OK, so this is um, vendor block. We'll update that. And then this one is picture block. And update that. So now, um, if I save this, I have much more useful information in my displays than I had before. I have vendor block and picture block, so I know what I'm looking at. If you have a lot of displays, someone over here asked, can you use the same view multiple times? If you have a lot of different displays, then this is really kind of one of the ways to um, organize it for yourself. For example, the Drupal Camp LA site, the attendees view, um, has a lot of different options. So, and they're all blocks, so they all have to be named in order to keep track of what they're supposed to do. Um, okay. Moving right along, because we are getting to 4 o'clock, and, um, and we definitely want to end soon, um, we should look at attachment really quickly. Attachment is, um, is a great tool for your view, because it allows you to attach something that's different, like a different way of viewing your content, to a page or a block or some other element. Um, so I'm going to add this attachment display. And um, what I'm going to do, attachment down here, attachment settings, it says, you know, do you inherit arguments? Yes. Any arguments that I set up, if I had something set up in here, I would inherit it. Do I inherit exposed filters? Exposed filters is, is this. So does it show that? Okay, yes uh, or no. We don't want it to, ex to expose that. We want that to be um, invisible. Where is it positioned on your page that it's attached to? Well, we'll put it to before. What's it attached to? Right now it's not attached to anything. So we're going to attach it to our page. We're going to attach it to this principal view right here, or the other, um, this one. We're going to attach it to this page right here that we created. So it'll go up at top. And what I want it to be is a featured item. So one vendor, randomly sorted, gets featured at the top of this, of this list. So we'll just quickly go in here and override and then remove these. Add the random, add global random. Um, Update that, and um, I'm going to make it not an HTML list because that's just going to look weird. So I'll unformat it. Um, I don't want to update my default display. About to do that. A no grouping field, and um, and then items to display. I only want one. So override, show one. Update. OK. So now I have an attachment that's attached to the page. So I'm going to save that. And we're just going to take a quick look at it. 
Okay, so what we have now at top, if I refresh, it'll change. We have a randomly featured vendor with all of that information at the top, and then we have the list underneath it. Now, what you're probably noticing is that there's two vendor sorts up here, even though we told it not to inherit exposed filters. I knew that was going to happen, and I intentionally wanted you to see it because it's, uh, it's an issue. It's an issue with the current release of views. Um, Drupal modules are always, you know, there's a very active community of which we are all part of, of people building these modules, improving these modules, finding issues with these modules. A new version of Drupal views was just, views 2 was released not too long ago. Did the update, the exposed filters ended up becoming inherited even though it said no. Um, so if you see something like this and you know, you know, you're looking at your attachment view and you're like, you know, I really, I told it not to inherit exposed filters. What did I do wrong? Sorry about that. Um, the possibility is you didn't do anything wrong. The possibility is that there might be an issue. Um, so I really wanted you to see that because, um, because that is how you can troubleshoot as well. It's not always you. There might be something going on. So, you know, when I did a search for it, I was like, what's going on? I actually found very easily on Drupal.org the issue queue for the, for the views problem that I was having, that it was ignoring the exposed, the, do, my note to say do not inherit exposed filters. Um, now, what's nice when you do these searches, what's really nice is that oftentimes there's a solution. You add your issue. And then now, um, now somebody knows that you're also having problems. If you're very informative about what you did when that issue came up, that's going to help the developer a lot more, and it makes you a contributing member of the Drupal community. So, um, so it's it's a good thing to do. And sometimes there's solutions to the problem as well. So, um, easy solutions sometimes. So, um, so when you see problems like that. Don't always automatically assume that you're doing something wrong. Make sure that you take a look at drupal.org and see what's going on. I hope that didn't confuse anybody. I thought it was important to show. Is everybody on? OK, great. All right. Um, last really important view to show um, is RSS feed. Um, OK. Oops, wrong thing. So I'm going to go back to my list. Find my Drupal Camp view, edit it, and add an RSS feed. So just feed, add display. Um, okay, a couple things. Row style, missing style plugin. Just click on that and change it to node because it doesn't show by fields, it shows by, by node. Um, the path, it needs a path for, for your RSS feed. So I'm just going to say, you know, Drupal view. RSS, update that. Um, OK, so now if I just quickly go to feed and preview, it's showing me the RSS feed. This is, this is good. This is what you want to see. Um, an RSS reader knows how to deal with this. Does everyone know what RSS is? Anyone feeling kind of lost on that? OK, if you are and you just don't want to say so here, see me at the Drupal Chicks table. I'll be happy to talk with you as well. Because um, RSS feeds are, are cool, I think. Um, anyway, so, um, so now I've done that. Now, you can also attach it to a view, so I can attach it to the page. What's going to attach to the page is simply that little orange RSS icon, um, which people are nodding their heads, so they know what I'm talking about. But you'll see it in a moment as well. So I'm attaching this to my page, and I'm going to save it. And then we'll go look at our page. I hope that's OK. And if I scroll down, there's the little orange icon that takes me to an RSS feed. Now, the reason I've been working in Safari instead of the browser of choice is for this. So we now, we now have an RSS feed. And I'm actually going to go to that feed right here on Firefox. Um, what did I call it? Drupal View RSS. So I'm going to go to that URL. 
And I'm going to take a look, and there's nothing there at all. So I did something wrong. Actually, I didn't. I didn't do anything wrong. This is exactly what I'm supposed to see, and here's why. If I go to localhost from this page on the site, you'll notice that what you're seeing here is a whole lot less than what you're seeing, oops, I just bypassed it, than what you're seeing in the menu here. Because on this particular site, I set it up so that you have to be an approved member of a very specific type in order to see any of the CFAN 411 content. So because on Firefox, I'm not actually logged into the site, I don't have permission to see the items in the RSS feed. Does that make sense? So Views is very smart. It knows if you have permission or not. So I'm just going to log in as a member. Uh, I didn't hack his account. I created it because I needed a member account. Oops. And maybe I forgot it. Did I? No, I didn't. Come on, let me in. OK, great. OK, um, so I've now just logged in as a member who has permission. I'll refresh. And there it all is. There's the RSS feed. It's showing me everything that's been added to CFAN 411. Um, if I want, I can subscribe to it. And it'll go into, if I have a reader, you know, Google Reader, or I use Net Newswire, it doesn't matter what you use. If you have a reader, you can subscribe to it. You'll get updates. So you can actually then syndicate your content's client, or your client's content, in, in this manner. Um, so that, um, and they, you know, it can work the other way as well. You can actually create RSS feeds. You can aggregate RSS feeds using Drupal. And you can use views to display them in certain ways. So let's say, you know, I, um, I worked a lot on the Stand Up to Cancer site. And I've also done a lot of work uh, for a group called Remedy Foundation. Um, so these are both, and I'm, I'm also working on a site for the Los Angeles Youth Network. So these are all nonprofits that I obviously care a lot about. I might one day decide to put on my own website an aggregated feed of all of their content. So I can use views. I, first of all, I use the aggregator, the out-of-the-box module from Drupal, um, the aggregator, to pull those feeds into my site um, because it is syndicated content. And then I create a view that puts them all into one feed that I then send out of my website. All of this you can now do. It might you know, take you a little while to um, kind of muddle through some of it if this is brand new to you. But if you've been playing with this for a bit, you, you can do it. It's really all fairly, um, it's all within the user interface. And the tools are fairly readily accessible. Um, OK. That, there are a couple words of warning I wanted to give, and I wanted to give you a URL that has some, um, some other resources on it. But before I do that, questions, yes? Question on the RSS feeds. Can you attach it to a page that is not the same one that is created? Not through views, but you could easily create a block that has the syndicate icon on it, and then um, attach that block to whatever page you want to attach it to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, OK. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> yeah, if um, I, I, I do subscribe to a number, I use NetNewsWire, NetNewsWire, and I do subscribe to a number of feeds that are, um, that are password protected. Um, and it does, it does allow me to log in and actually authenticate myself. So yeah, it's entirely doable. Yeah. Are you going to talk about arguments? No, I'm not, uh, because we're at 410, and arguments are huge. Um, but I will say this. Arguments and relationships are the, what takes views to the next step. You've basically gotten the groundwork for, for Drupal, um, or sorry, for views right now. Arguments and relationships bring on all kinds of new functionality. And um, remember at the beginning, I was showing you um, that I had a couple of views that were pulled into a page based on the user profile that I was on, and that was showing only that user's content. That's done using an argument. 
um, you can use relationships to do something like, um, let's say you have a job board, um, a university, the, the Drupal, using Drupal book, um, the O'Reilly using Drupal book is, is a great book that um, explains this and you should definitely go through it. Uh, but their example is a job board where um, you want to have jobs called up uh, or have applications called up by job for the person who's doing the hiring. So you can use relationships to do that or to pull up um, content by user, for example. So, um, so they're very great tools and you should definitely um, look at them. And some of these resources that I'm about to uh, give you a link for, those resources will take you to some nice video tutorials that will walk you through some stuff with, with arguments and relationships. Yeah, other questions? All right, so a couple quick words of warning. Um, I just want to remind you that nothing saves um, until you click the save button. And it may require a lot of painful experiences of forgetting that um, to really learn it. But, um, but try to learn it now so that you don't go through the, <laughs> those experiences. Um, the, other, the other thing that I really wanted to um, warn, remind you is the defaults, the thing about defaults, if it's italicized, it's affecting the defaults. So just be careful to make sure to override your defaults whenever you want to, to do that. Also, performance. Um, I think the very last session in this camp um, is a Drupal scalability and performance session, so that'll be useful. But views is making queries on a database. And if you have a whole lot of queries going at the same time, that's going to be a drag on performance. For a small site like this, it really doesn't matter. There's like 40 users. Um, it's, it's not much content. It doesn't matter. I can make as many queries as I want. Um, I was uh, the technical supervisor on the Stand Up to Cancer website. Day of the Stand Up to Cancer show, um, the, oops, <laughs> the day of the Stand Up to Cancer show, we had a million people hit the website. We had a, a Teams page that had um, that was calling uh, for, it, it probably had about, um, I think, 50 um, teams displayed when it was called, and each team was displaying 10 different things. It, it was too much. It just, so you have to kind of recognize uh, that you are making database queries using views, and you can hurt your performance. So just take, make an assessment of what you actually need and what you don't need in those views. And this is something, if you are working with a client, if you aren't your own client, this is something that you'll have to work with your client on because uh, the client won't necessarily understand this and it's not really for them to understand. It's, it's really for you to help them understand. Um, so, so that's just something to think about as well. So those are really the only words of warning I wanted to give because views are pretty awesome. Um, what I do want to give you is a URL, uh, sunrainproductions.com, that's my website, slash DrupalCampLA. Um, all three of the sessions that I'm giving um, have little links off of this. This one is Views Demystified. Once the presentations are available online, I will link the presentation off of this site. Um, there's a couple of additional resources, including additional tutorials. Um, and this guy, Matt uh, Petrowski, has a couple of really good tutorials for relationships and arguments as well. Um, so you should definitely take a look at that. Um, I've linked the Views Rotator module, which we didn't really get to talk about, but, um, but is kind of a fun one. Um, it's the one that showed the slideshow. I've linked that off of there. And, um, and that's... That's really everything. So feel free to come up here and ask me more questions if you want to. Uh, if you have a question that you think the whole group would want to know, ask it now. Or if you have anything that you want to add, please feel free to. No? All right.
Yeah. It's not exactly about to you, okay. but because you've been working with the nonprofit site. I can't remember the name of it now, but there's another open source um, for nonprofits to help them with oh, event management. Pass? What did you say? Is it cost pass? I can't remember, but I know they oh. have it for Drupal. Oh, no, you use it for Civic CRM. Is yes, Civic yeah. CRM. And I was wondering if you had used it before mm -hmm. or I, if you I recommend it. I have used it. it. Um, I, my, research, my research tends to point to it being the, the best one. Okay. Um, there are kind of paid tools out there that you can use. Like, um, they're all escaping me right now because my brain isn't like Blackbot or um, something. But um, Civic CRM is pretty cool. I'm using it. I'm working on a thing for schizophrenia right now. I'm going to be using it for pretty extensively. Okay. Because um, I have a nonprofit, profit and I was going yeah. to I definitely like using it. it. Okay. It's a good one. Okay, great. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Yes. Rain, what was the what was the uh, seminar lecture that you advised me afterwards? Uh, uh, oh, that's a good question. <laughs> no, I should have remembered that. <laughs> that's okay. And what's your question? Uh, the uh, when you add displays, mm -hmm. they inherit the defaults. They inherit the defaults or... automatically, and then you'll override the defaults to sort of specialize your. So on that top level, it's okay to change the defaults because that's what you want. Right. But then right. as you add displays, that's what. You want. Yeah, that's when you'll want to override. Okay. Them. Yeah. Okay. So oh, must have modules for your Drupal site, which is now at six, and it's in this room. I thought so. <laughs> Good job. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah, with Nicole. And then come come tomorrow morning to to site administration basics. Okay. Yeah. Um, what I be doing right now? Now in six. Um. Well, this might be a good one, which is here as well. In fact, this will probably be a really good one because it's search engine optimization. Yeah. Um. Oh, you know what, these, yeah, you can't go wrong, actually. There's four really good sessions. Um, this one might be too advanced for you at this point, so I wouldn't go to that one, but um, but these other three, you, you really can't go wrong. It's just what's more interesting to you at this moment. There's probably, probably some of the best sessions right there. You put them all at the same time. Yeah. Well... Okay, great. Okay. Off topic question. Yeah. So, uh, we've got a website we're working on. We have 13 different magazines. Okay. Um, but they share a lot of content, they share a common user base. We set up a website looking at Drupal toward architecting that. So